Now, moving on to special considerations, we're talking about infants and children. So remember, when this little baby, this little bun comes out of the oven here, they're not fully developed. Babies commonly have those holes inside the heart that close in the last few weeks of utero. So when they come out of the mom, they're going to be taking this deep breath. And when the baby takes their first deep breath, it's going to be a big, big, deep breath or a series of breaths that closes those holes in the heart, specifically the PDA, the patent ductus arteriosus, which deals with the heart and the lungs as one circuit. So those little holes are going to close. And the next thing that happens is the respiratory circuit or the respiratory system actually kicks into overdrive here and the alveoli begin to open. Because if you think about it, the baby was just inside of a fluid filled abdomen, right? That uterus. And now they have to breathe air for the first time. So infants don't have a lot of surfactant. So remember surfactant stretches that alveoli. So the alveoli don't open and close as easily and often get a little bit stuck. So simply remember, surfactant helps to stretch the alveoli there, and newborns really lack that. So newborns can come out having breathing issues and have to be put on oxygen or really having to be deep suctioned or even going to the NICU, the neonatal ICU for breathing issues. Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from simplenursing.com. Did you get your beautifully handcrafted study guide bundle yet? It highlights the key points and memory tricks in this video. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, all neatly organized in the playlist, along with thousands of practice questions written by actual NCLEX writers. So don't be scared, be prepared. Try it free today. Visit simplenursing.com. Now, in terms of pregnant individuals, remember the three big issues is number one, the baby's getting big. Number two, we have the hormones. And number three, extra blood volume. So pregnant women that say, I can feel like I cannot catch my breath or I'm short of breath all the time because they can't catch their own breath because nowhere, well, there's nowhere for the air to go, right? They have a huge baby inside their abdomen. And think about that diaphragm right there that helps you breathe. So that huge baby is blocking that. So they're always gonna feel out of breath or they can't really take that full breath. Now for a practice question here. A client who is 32 weeks gestation tells the nurse that she has been experiencing shortness of breath when walking up the steps at home. She is concerned that something's wrong. What is the nurse's best response? The correct answer here is the enlarging uterus pushes against your diaphragm and this makes breathing shallow. So yes, just remember that we have an increase in hormones that actually cause relaxation of the ligaments and joints, as well as this big baby inside the abdominal area is pushing against that diaphragm, which is making it harder for pregnant clients to breathe. Now, it's very interesting that pregnant clients can often get this barrel chest and Allison explain why. So if you think about it, as that baby gets bigger, she goes to take a deep breath in or the client, the individual that's pregnant goes mm -hmm. to take a deep breath in and that diaphragm can't drop down because that baby's taking up all the space. A little so, baby hot tub in there. Yeah, and they're like, breathing underwater. So mom has to breathe for both mom and baby essentially mm. and get oxygen to the baby. So since the diaphragm can't drop down, the chest wall has to move out to allow for that expansion of the lungs. So very common during pregnancy is that they get that barrel chest or increased front to back. Mm -hmm. And remember, like we talked about before, that with that increased front to back, that means that costal angle is also going to increase. So it won't be 90 degrees, it will widen. So everything's going to expand and those ribs are gonna expand. Absolutely. Leading to that barrel chest. Okay, now moving on to aging adult. Remember, aging adults are like raisins, right? Everything slows down, stiffens up, gets dried, atrophies, which is that hard and stiff, and even loses elasticity. So that loss of elasticity happens inside the lungs too, right? So think about that lack of mobility, and think about those air sacs, those alveoli, that are supposed to expand and get all that oxygen in. Well, they can't do that anymore, so they become raisins. And so now gas exchange is not really proficient. So the client cannot breathe easily, they can't move their chest wall easily, and have it squeezed back into place. Now, what do we have to know about the emphasized dorsal curve there? So basically that curve of the spine, they get that kyphosis, so that rounding forward. And when that happens, they have that hunchback. Sometimes you'll see it called a Dowinger's hump oh, okay. or a hunchback. 
And so they essentially have really bad posture. And so when you have that curvature of the spine, the lungs can't open and close as well. And so their body can start to compensate. And so then it tries to move the chest cavity for them so they can get that increased excursion or even increased chest wall front to back. So they can also get barrel chest. Now, another big key term here for elderly populations, they also get decreased vital capacity and increased residual volume. So what the heck does that even mean? That's, it's a lot of words, yes. right? So vital capacity, think about like the capacity of a room. Okay. It's how much you can fill. So they can't fill as much in their lungs. So decreased vital, vital meaning important, mm -hmm. vital capacity. But so then additionally, they have increased residual volume. Okay. So residual means something left behind. So they have more that's left behind. And when that air gets left behind, then that's gonna be that bad air that gets left behind. The so, air trapping. Absolutely. Okay. And so that's gonna be that residual volumes, that amount that remains in the lungs after they exhale. And that can be normal expected that occurs with aging. Now our elderly populations are also gonna get fatigued as well as shortness of breath upon exertion, right? as well as mucous membranes are gonna be dried. So simply think of that raisin. It's gonna get really stiff and dried. And even the cilia inside the lungs are gonna get stiff and basically coarse or basically thick here, as well as having a weaker non-productive cough, commonly seen as a barking or really dry cough. They can also have respiratory illnesses for longer because their lungs are becoming that raisin, right? It's gonna be super dried and stiff. They can't cough up that infection anymore. So these clients are really at high risk for respiratory infections that stick around for a long time. All right, that wraps it up for the respiratory section. Let's move on to cardiac.